enough for me to reset, compose myself and go again for the other half of the day. But if you're not getting that lunch break and the stress is just building, then you go back out there, you're snapping at the prisoners, you, you, you ain't got as much patience as what you would have. You need that break to reset. <clears throat> Your job sounds so stressful. I work at the NHS. I get 30 minutes lunch break a day. It's stressful. Wow. I did not know that, that the NHS got only got 30 minutes lunch break. That is absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. If you worked a full day, so eight hours or more, you would only get half an hour. I'm going for an OSG job. Sleep, Charlotte. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Hope it all works out for you. Do you know what I love? And this is probably my highest um, feedback and my most amount of comments and questions is how do I join the prison service and Mel, I've just started as a prison officer because I watched you live. Honestly, that makes me buzz for it, absolutely buzz for it. Here we go with the big emoji. NHS night shift, two 30 minutes. Oh, okay. God, that 30 minutes just goes by so quick, do not it? I've not long got out. All the screws do is play snooker and pool and then lock your doors. <laughs> I didn't play um, mm. pool or snooker, but you would see me on the table, the um, tennis table. And when I first started playing table tennis, I was fucking awful. But fast forward to the end of the six years, um, of my career and god i used to thrash the fucking asses i used to get prisoners to teach me I'm like come here how do i do these little quick shots on this table dennis and the the words they'd be like mel you got to do it like this and you got to do this and yeah with a little bit of practice and patience on on um on duty during south i soon picked up um table tennis but that is not true screws do not just come along and play snooker and pool and then lock your doors unfortunately and if they did then the job would probably be a little bit better and officers won't be as fucking stressed um officers or for prisoners looking at officers on that front line you probably think um none of us are really doing a lot but behind the scenes it is all go 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 you do have a lot of boxes to tick a lot of audits it's it all every single thing across the country even schools now when you look at schools everything is a fucking business everything is a business and it all boils down to facts figures and whether the t's are crossed and the i's are dotted it's bollocks it's bollocks because really when you look at rehabilitation it's about showing another human being what it is to be human humane and inspiring them to want to do the same it's not locking doors and beating them and letting them feel like the pieces of shit on cabin crew and we don't get a chance to have a lunch break. Wow. Just thought to myself in my head there, what about a cabin crew job, Mel? <laughs> These people coming on and putting pig emojis, honest to God, I was reading my mate's house earlier and she said, do you want any of that stuff we're throwing out? And there was a cup with a pig on it and I said, yes! I want that fucking cup for my cup of tea when I'm sitting on TikTok and it's smashed. How about that? Come and work on the aircraft with us. Ha ha. Do you know what? I could just fucking imagine me. I could just imagine me. I'd be the fucking stupid idiot. Do you know when you're all doing yet? <laughs> Exits and all of that. Mel's probably the one not keeping up. Well, she's got the fucking the little blow tube tangled around a fricky leg or something like that. Yeah, I'm definitely Bridget Jones, and there's no way I could disguise that. Even when I was a prison officer, so you would always see me falling over, falling up the stairs, falling down the stairs. Nine times out of ten, I'd have a fucking coffee stain on my shirt at nine o'clock in the morning. Yep. Yeah. I was a Bridget Jones as much as I'd put my lashes on and my lippy and my tan and I'd like to go out there looking all feminine and pretty within 30 minutes. If you haven't cottoned on that I'm common as muck by what I say or the way I say it, I've done something stupid where you're scratching your head thinking who the fuck gave this woman a set of keys but 
I'm living fucking proof that us commoners that are brought up on council estates, that aren't very academic, that are kinesthetic learners, that have been exposed to things that they probably shouldn't have been exposed to from a young age, I am the perfect fucking recipe for a prison officer because you deal with shit so much different to somebody that hasn't been exposed to some of the things that I have. At least you can vape on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> you're right mate, you're right, at least you can, but let me tell you something else. And this is probably naughty of me because you're not allowed to vape in prison. But the prisoners do, and guess what, so do the staff. So it was a big rule, you know, I would never go out there and say to prisoners, don't vape on the landing. Because I did, and how can I tell them to do something that I am doing? And it was the one rule that I did break, I mean I wouldn't stand there all day you know, fucking competing, bowing, the biggest vape puffs with the man then. But in between them, that regime, you know, when you've got unlock at half seven, your next unlock's at eight, your next unlock's at um, quarter to nine, then you've got to go and get trolleys. It's a really fast paced regime. And them little windows in between the regime where you've got 10 minutes, I would go to the other end of the landing, furthest away from your grassing yourself. <laughs> come on, come on, we've got to be honest, hey? I promised from the start we would have an honest room. Um, you'd find me right at the opposite end of the landing where the lads at the top would be cooking the food and I would be hiding with a coffee and just having that two minutes to have a vibe and it bloody was needed, let me tell you, let me tell you. On my way to Tenerife, everyone was vaping. Do our SGs get baton trained? Believe it or not, um, most people will be surprised to know that I never carried a baton throughout the six years that I was a prison officer because I worked for a private jail. So if you work for HMP, you will carry a baton. If you work for a private jail, you don't. Which do I think is better? Private? Absolutely. You know, if you're walking around with a great big friggin' iron bar on your waistband that you're going to pull out and then start twatting prisoners with, you best believe if they get their hands on that iron bar, they're going to twat you back. So why on earth would you have a weapon? Whatever way you look at it, you can say it's for protection, you can say it's for something else. We don't condone prisoners to have fucking weapons in the waistbands, so why would you then encourage a police of a, a prison officer to do it? Um, I completely understand the police when you're out in the public and you're with, you know, one more bobby, that fucking baton may potentially save your life, but in a prison, you've got to hit an alarm and within two minutes your landing's flooded with 50 white shirts. You do not need that baton. You do not need it. I heard before I left the service that they were trialling pepper spray. Something else that I'm completely against. So many things can go wrong in a prison with pepper spray. And God forbid you pull it out and use it. Because I used to work in a nightclub. I was a barmaid. And I remember the once I worked in the, the top floor of a nightclub. And to enter the nightclub, you would come in downstairs, um, up the stairs and exit at the top floor via the ramp. So I remember the once clocking from the corner of my eye, a bouncer come crawling up the stairs and his eyes was all fucking streaming. When he's got to the top of the stairs, there's another bouncer that's followed. He's on his hands and knees crawling. Then another bouncer. Basically, um, on the front door, the bouncers have refused someone entry for being uh, too intoxicated. They've kicked off. The police are already in the town, so the police have come over. It's kicked off and the police have decided to use pepper spray. But because it's out in public, in wind, the wind has blew the pepper spray straight into all the doorman's eyes. So now all the doormen are fucking blind. So that is a perfect example of why pepper spray should not be used because if you pull it out and you don't use it correctly and God forbid you gas out half of your fucking team, then guess what the prisoners are going to be doing? They're definitely 110% are not going to be standing there helping you. They're going to either be fucking laughing, pulling their iPhones out their ass to record it, or to at it, yeah, that is, I'm just being real, because let's face it, when you're in prison and you're being locked up by officers, it's going to be pretty fucking funny, isn't it, if them officers then end up with pepper spray in the face. Why well, have we got the clothes on? People ask me this all the, t all the time. If you look at my latest post, it's somebody else saying, why are you a sad bastard sitting in the costume in your kitchen? If I didn't have this costume on, first of all, how many people would scroll past me and think she's just talking about, I don't know, anything, really, because we do talk about fucking anything in this room. You'll notice that I'll jump from subject to subject. Um, and people will miss me. And it's not that I want people to stop and be like, oh, 
look, let's give this woman a few likes, let's build her content. For me, it's not about that. It's about building content big enough that people will actually be like, do you know what, I'm sick of hearing about jail. I'm sick of hearing about this issue in prison. I'm sick of hearing about that issue in prison. Because you hear me say it all the time, unless you've been to prison, you love someone that's been to prison or you've worked in a prison, you don't really know, therefore you don't really give a shit. It's almost like um, out of sight, out of mind. That's the phrase I was looking for. So for members of the public, it must be, well, the government say that jails are run correctly and you hear on the news that, you know, they're building more jails. And, yeah, it's... It's not good, the prison service. The prison service is not good. I just simply ask myself the question, do I want one of my loved ones to end up in prison? And the answer is no, and that's not for the shame of their offence or because they've broken the law, because I am not a judgmental person. You know, unless you've harmed a child, um, I'm not really... I can't say I'm not really asked. of course I'm asked, but I'm not, I'm not going to sit and judge her. I'm not going to sit and judge her. I've met murderers, I've met gang members, I've met people that have chopped people up with machetes. I've met people that you would not fucking believe, but then you sit down and have a cup of tea with them and then get to know them over a period of time. And when I say over a period of time, when you're doing 14 hour shifts, day in, day out on a landing, you spend more time with these offenders you do your own family. So they can't all be pulling the wool over our eyes. They can't all be good people, surely. You know, I'm not that gullible. Did you like being a PO? Andrew, I absolutely fucking loved being a PO. I remember growing up when I was a kid and I always used to say the phrase when people used to... I was um, a rogue is probably the best way to describe me growing up. Bit of a Vicky Pollard when I entered my teenage years. I was the person at school that didn't really... Um, want to engage in lessons that didn't interest me so unless it was PE or like in a Bunsen burner in science and that was only for the laughs and giggles um, I wasn't really interested sorry I forgot where I was running with it oh yeah did I enjoy being a PO so when I was at school I was used to say the line to the teachers when they say what are you gonna do when you leave school you're gonna work at McDonald's I used to say don't you worry about me miss don't you worry about me sir You'll see me on the telly when I'm older. <laughs> You'll see me on the telly when I'm older. I don't need qualifications. And I was so fixated on, I want to be um, a performer. That is what I really wanted to do. When I was in year 10, I discovered a love for drama. I ended up getting the main parts in um, the production. And then I went to uni to study media and film. And none of it really worked out. And... From the back of that, I ended up going into all different lines of work. I've literally been a barmaid, a support worker for disabled and vulnerable adults, a MIG welder. I thought I was fucking in flash dance, let me tell you, when I pulled down that mask and lit that fucking baby up. Yes! <laughs> um, every single job that I've had since leaving school, I never stuck it for any longer than 12 to 18 months because... It didn't matter what it paid me, I had to enjoy it. And it was so frustrating for me growing up and going through my 20s and thinking I wanted to be this or I wanted to be that. And then it turned out that wasn't really for me. Um, and then I happened to fall in to the job of a prison officer. And I remember after a couple of weeks on them landings, I just thought, this is what I was born to do. You know when Leona Lewis stood on stage and said to Simon Gale, I want to be a singer? Well, that's the exact same amount of passion that I had when I discovered a taste of what it was like to be a prison officer. And instantly I was satisfied. I was satisfied with the salary, and it's a shit salary, you know. You're not going to get a um, massive amount of finances and savings from being a prison officer, not unless you climb the rank. Um, and that was okay. That was okay for me. If I had enough to pay my bills, put food on the table, take my kids for an ice cream on a weekend, and not stress, have the pressure off, then I was living and I was happy and yeah, every year I was there, I just squeezed that lemon a little bit more and let me tell you, after six years, I was only scratching the service. I was only scratching the surface. Pensions in the prison service are shit. <laughs> mm. 
Sorry, just catching up on some comments. Did you ever dislike a prisoner? Yeah, it's so crazy because I come on TikTok and I've got to be honest, the first time I come live, I was sitting here where I am now and I was telling myself, the minute you hit that three, two, one button and you've got this shirt on your back, are you mentally strong enough to take the blows that are going to come? Grass, as you can see. It comes, it comes, it comes. Um, and I hit that three, two, one button and thought, you know what? Fuck it. What is the worst? that is going to happen um, and one thing that I did that did cross my mind is what if someone comes into this room that is a prisoner that was on my landing at the start of my career because as much as you hear me say now that prisoners are champions and I've met really inspiring prisoners you wouldn't have heard me say that when I started so when I started I was 25 years of age and I went out there like Miss Trunchbull 15 and a half stone and fucking pure British meat and yeah I completely grabbed them men by the bollocks and said you will do what I say and when I say it and that's not me being on a power trip or anything like that but I had a regime and run that regime I was determined to run and the only way I could do that with prisoners taking the piss because that first year prisoners do take the piss was say, okay, no problem, are you pay? Okay, no problem, I will hit an alarm. Okay, no problem, let's have a fucking bus stop. Let's tussle, princess. You know, it just, it was a tough year. Um, and that's how I started. So it's not like um, I always had this mindset. I went from one extreme as an officer to the other. I've never been to prison, but why do I crave to live there for a while? Do you know what? That's actually quite an interesting comment because there's a lot of people that um, are in this country at the moment that have said the same, that they would crave time in prison. I think it's because we all live in a world, if you're outside of prison, it's a rat race, isn't it? It's so fast. It used to be that, you know, years and years and years ago, you could pick up a pen, write a letter, post that letter, and you ain't got to fucking worry about that letter for 28 days, because by the time it gets to the other person the other end, and they've had their reply, and they've sent it back, you can breathe fucking easy, but guess what, we developed this thing, or designed this thing called the fucking internet, which is supposed to actually be a blessing and help us in life, but what we've done is allowed ourselves to have more jobs on our list, you know, you send an email in the morning, you've fucking got a reply by the afternoon, you've got to send another one by, by the afternoon again. And I think all of us crave a break, don't we, at some point. I've had some people say, what is the point in me being a law-abiding citizen to go to work, to come home, to pay bills, to not have no money left at the end of the week, to what, to just die at the end of my life? I might as well be in prison. And I get it. I'll get it, you know, two weeks in a prison cell where you've got a TV, you've got three square meals, you've got your meds, you can go and participate in some education, you can get down the gym, I bet that, you can get down the gym, I'll give you a PlayStation, it sounds fucking great, doesn't it? But, do you know, once them two weeks have gone past and the weeks turn into months and the months turn into years, it's then a different ball game and trust me you do not want to be behind that cell door so as much as people can say i really crave going to prison or i could really do with a break or prison's easy or prison's a holiday camp take it from somebody that's looked through that obs panel probably a hundred thousand times and there's not many happy sights on the other side of that door and yeah we live in a world where you know you see all on the time don't you um Prison on TV, prison on YouTube, prisoners with phones. Um, that can make it look fun. But that little snippet that you'll see a prisoner post on social media of them in a prison is probably, you know, a five-minute party that they've managed to have. And that's all they can have is a five-minute party before an officer catches. Otherwise, it's a pretty fucking quiet party, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. How's your friend Greg? Um, he's good, he's good. He said to me um, the other day, will you will you read, edit the live we done the other day and post the um, the video? Dave, when you're saying fake, let, let me, um, we haven't had a guest on yet and we've yet to have a guest that's going to come on and back up what they're saying in the comments. So if you're going to come on here and throw insults or be a dick, jump in the guest box and let's have a bust up because do you know when you're just in one? Do you fucking want some? Do you fucking want some, Dave? 